longer have an air traffic controller. It's part of those forced budget cuts. Jennifer Westhoven's in here, is here now. Jen, what does that mean for safety? Because that's a big deal. Well, the, the pilots group says they are concerned about this. Um, it's hard to know, though, because there's a lot of negotiating going on okay. here. Uh, but these, these are 238 airports that got letters from the FAA saying they're not going to have an air traffic controller. Now, look, most of these are airports that most of us would never really see. They're used by corporate jets, military jets. But starting in April, they could either close or they're going to let the pilots choose who turns where and when. Now, some airports already do that, but these generally have a little bit more traffic. That's why they have air traffic controllers there. But, you know, a lot of these cuts that are happening as they get distributed across the different agencies, really, um, most of them... Most of the brunt of the cuts is being borne by small and mid-sized airports. Um, now, they are going to feel it a little bit at the big airports, too, but not nearly as much. The FAA is taking pains to keep the very busiest airports from feeling it because that could slow down everybody. But at those bigger airports, people still are probably going to have to take off about two weeks in total between now and the end of September. That's about one day every two weeks. I'll tell you this, though. That's the sequester. What an ugly mess. But the next big Washington money conflict, they're working on averting that. Maybe politicians don't want so much negative publicity after the fiscal cliff and then this. On March 27th, though, the federal government would have run out of money. It was a big deadline. But the House passed a stopgap bill to fund things. The Senate and the president are expected to basically follow suit and agree to that. So that's a sort of calamity averted. All right, are you looking for a good price on something you want? Well, you can just take a picture with your phone. Here's how in the connection. So maybe you're traveling and you see this special something in a little boutique and it is so perfect. Hallelujah. It's expensive. Well, you don't necessarily have to pay that expensive price. You can just pull out your smartphone, take a picture of it. This is gonna find the lowest price for you on Amazon. So here's the Amazon app. When you open it up, it's this search button here. You can just take a picture of anything you have and you could scan it, but let's just say you've got a DVD that you want. You just go ahead and take its picture. Can you come and push the button? And then look at that, it gives you the cheapest price. So in this case, you can get it used someplace for a quarter. I'm sure shipping is more than that, but still that's a darn good price these days make it so easy for you to buy things in a way really different and especially with a service like Amazon it just gets shipped right to your home obviously that was a different day I'm wearing different clothes there <laughs> so we did try it out on some different things like toys and it works on both Android and also on the iPhone Natasha back to you all right Jen thank you okay can you say obsessed when a ref called a foul a fan called